Hi there! Welcome to Tourism Matters, a program that explores issues about tourism and why tourism is an important part of our lives. This is brought to you by UPAIT and TVUP. Tourism Matters tackle broad topics and are divided into three series. Number one, tourism policy and governance with a specific focus on issue on over-tourism. Number two, tourism education and human resource capacity. And number three, tourism industry, market, and enterprise. We hope you find the series interesting, educational, and fun. In this series, leading experts in tourism share their thoughts on over-tourism, a term that first appeared on social media in 2012 to denote the negative impacts of tourism and the social movements associated with host antagonism to too many guests. In episode 1, UP visiting professors explain over-tourism, its definition, causes, and dimensions. Professors Brent Ritchie from the University of Queensland, Australia, and Kumi Kato of Wakayama University, Japan, lend their voices to explain over-tourism in various contexts. The visiting professors were keynote speakers during the recently organized Second Philippine Research Conference on Tourism and Hospitality in Baguio City in 2018. The theme of that conference, organized by the University of the Philippines, was Facing the Challenges of Over-Tourism. Hello, my name is Kumi Kato from Wakayama University Center for Tourism Research and also Faculty of Tourism. I specialize in sustainable tourism and then I uh, work with local communities in Japan as well as overseas. Uh, I've been in tourism for the last 10 years since I moved from Australia to Japan and I spent nearly 25 years in, in Australia so my English is very Australian. So I'm very happy to be talking about tourism today. I guess over tourism is a very uncontrolled uh, probably an explosion of tourism. I guess a lot of people think about just a, like a mass number of people visiting one site but I think it's really the problem is more complex than that. I think it's really the lack of strategic planning and policy right. and a long-term vision for sustainability. Exactly. I guess um, a lot of people are aware of what's happening in a major uh, destinations such as Barcelona and Venice and what's happening, what's called anti-tourism movement from that uh, kind of more hostility from that uh, uh, local residents. Um, similar things started to happen in Japan. Japan's really experiencing a really rapid growth of international tourism. Um, 2015, we had over 20 million visitors. And now this year, 2018, we're expecting probably 30 million visitors, international visitors. And as you know, next year we will have Rugby World Cup in Japan. And then 2020, we have Tokyo Olympics. And then 2021, we have uh, Masters, uh, World Masters Games. So the Japanese government projecting uh, 2020 we will have 40 million visitors and 2030 we will have 60 million. So that's a very big number. But what's happening is we started to see that the impact on the local community and destinations. So particularly the, ve the very famous destination like uh, Kyoto, there is a very mass crowd now the local residents started to feel a little bit probably uneasy about what's happening. Like there is a big congestion on the road, like public transport, like a bus. A lot of uh, local residents say they cannot actually get on the bus. Uh, local shops are filled with uh, tourists or even the supermarkets that normally you don't see visitors, you started to see that uh, uh, guests. So that's happening in Japan and then now there is this word Kanko Kogai which is actually a, called tourism pollution. 
and that's probably the over tourism equivalent in in Japanese. So that's happening, uh, started to happen in the major cities like Kyoto and Osaka. And then I think some of you may have visited places like Dotonbori in Osaka. And that's now the local uh, communities, they don't want to go there because they're just filled with international visitors. Um, but at the same time, we have to be very careful that doesn't become anti-international visitors because it's very difficult to isolate the program uh, because the mass number of international tourism, tourists, but they're not always, they're, that's not, they're, uh, they're, they're not the only one who's causing the problem. It's a lack of infrastructure, lack of uh, proper planning, policy. So it's, we have to be very careful not to blame the obvious because International visitors, particularly in the mass number, it's very easy to say, well, because of them, we now have too many crowd, but that's not always the case. Um, I think, as I said, I think it's a really lack of uh, long vision sustainability, in long planning, long term planning for sustainability. And then uh, I guess what we really need to do is to really understand the carrying capacity not just the physical capacity, but also there is a kind of emotional capacity, um, cultural capacity, social capacity. There's all kinds of capacity that we really need to look at. And then I think it's really important to involve the local community and what kind of vision they have, and then what kind of priorities they have, and then what the tourism can play within that region, uh, within that vision. Um, I'm actually working with the local community in my prefecture called Wakayama. And then that's actually a quite famous pilgrimage destination. So now we started to see a lot of international tourists coming to actually walk the pilgrimage. Um, because of that uh, type of destination, it's very unlikely that we will have flood of tourists there. But then at the same time, we can go develop kind of wrong kind of tourism. But what I really value is that uh, communities along those destinations, those pilgrimage destinations, they actually, a lot of them actually moved from urban areas because they wanted a particular kind of lifestyle. I find those people's vision quite important because they, they choose to live in those places because of their priority in a sustainable lifestyle. So I think it's very important to use those people's vision to uh, avoid the actually destroying the, uh, the destination itself. As I said again, I think it's very important we don't blame the tourists. Um, but then at the same time, there are people who, um, I think local people's life is really fundamental in tourism development. So now the Japanese government actually last year, they did the survey of that uh, local community view about, uh, about tourism. Uh, what they're um, happy about, what they're not happy about. Um, so it's, it's really important that those people's view are really valued. So um, I think that the government really need to set the priority that community happiness and well-being is the priority. And if they really put that forward, then they will feel that their view is, their life and view is valued, not secondary to tourism development. So I think that priority is really important and that need to come through in the policy development. I think it's really difficult to say that here there is a solution, but I think all these active, uh, uh, well, one is the, those policy development and then planning based on the proper capacity, uh, caring capacity assessment, I think that's very important. And as I said, that's in including the physical uh, caring capacity 
as well as more kind of intangible kind of caring capacity which could involve that how that the community feel about the tourism. Um, of course that uh, uh, tourist uh, satisfaction is of course it's very important because we don't want to ruin their experience um, but then I think we really need to to come up with proper caring capacity assessment. I think that's really the beginning but that's again we need to involve the local community in those assessment as well. Um, at the same time I think we really need to project the sustainability vision. Often like in Japan uh, like uh, environmental impact it's taken care of by other departments like natural resource management. But of course we can't separate like tourism development and then those environmental planning. So they really need to communicate and work together. So that kind of partnership within that the sector or government is very important as well. Um, so now I think a lot of people becoming aware about the sustainability issue because of that the SDGs and I think in Japan also there is a, like a SDGs uh, future cities that was selected I think 29 cities selected in Japan and then some industry also started to become more aware about the sustainability issues through because of that SDG platform. So I think tourism really need to work uh, within, you can use that platform as a, as a guideline and then the sustainability issues really need to come to be really, uh, I guess there's a more public education in the industry as well as a community and then also visitors. But I think the destination, the host destination, they really need to have a stronger vision in the sustainability issue. Hi everyone, my name is Professor Brent Ritchie. I'm with the University of Queensland in Australia. I'm really pleased to be here at UP in the Philippines to talk about over-tourism. What in my view is over-tourism? Well, over-tourism very simply is too much tourism. Tourist arrivals are growing very, very rapidly. And unfortunately, tourists are traveling to the same place generally at the same time, creating a lot of congestion, crowding, and negative impacts. We're all familiar with the positive impacts of tourism, but unfortunately with over-tourism, we're seeing more of the negative impacts. In terms of carrying capacity, this is being reached in the communities where tourists are visiting and in the natural areas which they're also visiting. So carrying capacity is quite important in terms of understanding over-tourism, because the negative impacts of tourism will impact the community and its ability to absorb the impacts and recover quickly. The same can be seen in the natural environment. The more negative impacts tourism can have on coral or beach environments makes it very difficult to actually absorb the impacts and recover quickly over time. In terms of residents' perceptions and attitudes towards over-tourism, this is quite important to understand because all residents are different. Some residents may interact with tourists, they may see the positive benefits of tourism, and therefore their carrying capacity, their impacts that tourism will have, will be less. They might be more supportive towards tourism because they are employed or because they are, their family members are employed through tourism. So not all residents are the same and understanding their attitudes and perceptions around tourism is very, very important. We're seeing some local residents in some cities actually responding negatively to tourism and this is because they're affected most negatively by the impacts of tourists. In terms of its manifestations, what we're seeing with over-tourism is a large number of people coming to key places at the same time. Tourism is very seasonal. So what we're seeing is a huge influx at key periods of time, generally summer periods, which is having a major impact on the community. Now tourists are often traveling too to the same places. And so this is also an issue. We need to be able to disperse tourists beyond the key cities, beyond the key beaches, beyond the key resorts. In terms of where we can see over tourism, especially in Europe, we can see this in many, many cities in Europe which are being overrun by tourists. Examples include Venice, Dubrovnik in Croatia, Amsterdam, uh, and also Barcelona. What we're seeing is the influx of tourists during key times at key locations 
and it's causing a lot of congestion. It's creating price rises, it's having negative economic impacts, it's also having traffic congestion and, and all these impacts on the local community. So it's affecting their quality of life. And this is leading to some negative sentiment towards tourists. In some cases, we're actually seeing local people attacking tourists. We're seeing graffiti, we're seeing protests against tourism because of the nature of it. In terms of the underlying conditions, I think some of the conditions that are influencing over tourism, obviously to do with the number of people coming at the key points in time at a key, key locations. Uh, what we need to think about is spreading the flow of visitors beyond the key, key cities. In terms of the role of social movements, civil society, groups and government, all have a role to play. Obviously government has the ability to manage tourism, to perhaps put in place uh, policies to restrict where tourists go and what they do, but also I think NGOs also have a role to play. I think recently when we've seen closures of island resorts, uh, because of over-tourism, we've seen government policies enacted, but we may not have seen NGOs and civil society come in and say, how do we actually make this work so that people don't lose jobs and we don't end up with uh, poverty uh, issues. So I think government has a role, key role to play in, in dealing with the over-tourism issue, but so too does the tourism industry. It has to take some responsibility for the impacts of tourism. Perhaps it has to look at how it actually operates, has to think about its waste management, it has to see, look at how it can actually reduce its impact on the community. Tourists also have to take a responsibility. Unfortunately, some tourists don't behave as well as we should expect them to do, and they also have to take some responsibility. And that might mean communicating with them about what they can do to reduce their impact on the community. We might need to communicate to them about how to travel to the destination at a different time of the year and that will encourage them to actually have a better experience as well when it's less congested. I think the discussions on over-tourism need to also take place outside of the academic and research community. I think the academic community can help develop research programs to better understand over-tourism, its consequences, its impacts, its causes, and then perhaps look at formulating policies and strategies to deal with the issue. I think academic research can also be used to help evaluate and monitor the strategies and policies that are implemented perhaps to deal with over-tourism. But the academic community can't just do this research in a silo. It needs to actually communicate the findings, work with government, work with the not-for-profit sector to make sure the policies are implemented and that they're actually evaluated. At the end of the day, we need to make sure that we learn lessons, we are able to develop strategies that actually work and don't negatively impact the local community. So in terms of the issues, we've got a large number of people travelling to the same destinations at the same time. So a key measure to deal with over-tourism is actually to spread the flow of people, is to actually encourage them to travel to other places or other parts of the city or the destination. So perhaps we can think about developing events or other activities outside of the main tourist season to make sure they travel at that point in time. We could also look at spreading tourists to other parts of the, the destination uh, where perhaps they're not going to have as much of a large impact. However, that can have drawbacks because some neighbourhoods might not be ready to accept tourists away from the tourist zones. We can also think about policies and strategies to plan and manage tourism better. At the moment, a lot of the issues around over-tourism are to do with a lack of planning, like a lack of dealing with the problems, spreading the flow and dealing with traffic congestion. Also, in terms of the short-term rental accommodation, we're seeing some places in Europe really negatively affected by Airbnb and short-term rental accommodation. We're seeing some responses to that by actually regulating against Airbnb and actually reducing the number of days that short-term rentals can be leased to tourists. So these are measures that the government can put in place. We can also see other mechanisms by actually communicating to tourists to change their behaviour. Some of the problems are actually about the tourists and their behaviour when they're in the destination. So obviously there are ways that we can do that through communicating through the travel industry to explain to tourists what is right or wrong in terms of what their behaviour is. 
and hopefully we can actually change that behaviour so that they don't litter, they don't pollute the environment and they act and treat people with respect and dignity when they're visiting these destinations. Another option I guess is closing places, is actually shutting them down to tourists and tourism. And obviously we're seeing this in Boracay and also in Maha Beach in Thailand. However, closing down the tourism destinations might not necessarily be a good plan. It may be in the short term and may help the environment, although it may cause problems in terms of employment and lead to issues around poverty. We might be seeing some of this in the case of Boracay with people actually being displaced, workers being displaced from the island. I'm not sure if six month closure is enough to actually rehabilitate the coral reefs and deal with some of the underlying issues, but it is a good start. I think we might see more closures of destinations uh, as we see a, a reaction towards over tourism. But my concern is this might be a bit reactive and perhaps not thinking about the flow and implications to the economy and to society. I think what we need to think about and, and deal with is actually the seasonality aspects and the numbers of people coming. If we can showcase other destinations, we might be able to spread the burden, but also spread the positive impacts that tourism can bring to communities. Look, we're seeing some negative reactions from local residents against tourism. We're seeing some graffiti, we're seeing protests and anti-tourism sentiment because local people feel alienated in their own communities. We're also seeing some people actually questioning travel and consumption associated with travel. And this is particularly in European markets like Germany, where they're actually thinking about slow forms of travel such as cycling and walking. They're also thinking about not traveling to a destination for business, with, if they can do that through Skype or technology, thing, things like that. So we're seeing that. So people are starting to question their consumption patterns and travel and tourism obviously has a big impact on the environment and they're questioning that, reducing their travel. Too much of a good thing could be bad. That is true of over-tourism. Given that tourism could impact a destination adversely, it is important that we understand such impacts and how we could respond to them. In the next episode, we analyze the government and the private sector's response to over-tourism.